Well, it's really interesting because I graduated from college with a specialization in embedded computing systems and hardware software interfaces. So when it was actually time to look for jobs, I was looking for roles in space, I was looking for roles in biotech, consulting, software. And what really struck me about space was that it's really this perfect marriage between patriotism and capitalism. And we're building really cool products that make an indelible impression in the world. We're driven by a higher sense of purpose, the mission, our love for change, our love for our country. But we also have to keep cost, profitability, customers, competitors in mind. So it's this very unique and eclectic mix. And just this year, from a Boeing perspective, we've had the opportunity to be involved with programs that have impacted humanitarian relief efforts in Mexico. We're in the process right now of working on internet connectivity for the other three billion people in the world, and we're always involved in national security efforts. And so, from our perspective, we have the vision of connect, protect, explore, inspire. There's other industries where one of those things is done really well. There's some industries where a few of those things is done really well, but only in space and satellites are all of those things done really well. Well, I'd probably give myself three words or three lessons of advice. The first is not to be typecast by my major and not really look at myself from the perspective of an aerospace engineer or a mechanical engineer, but just as an overall holistic engineer, problem solver, and technologist. And that's because really the boundaries of the traditional disciplines are breaking and all of the key innovations are really happening right at the at those boundaries and the, those lines that are blurred in between the boundaries. So from that perspective, really looking at my area of specialization and saying, how could this be applied to another area or feed into another area would be something that I wish I had known. Secondly, I think it's more important to how you're learning versus what you're learning. And what you're learning is very important, but the how you're learning is probably even more important. And learning how to learn is probably the key professional skill that I've had to apply over and over again in my career. Because you're always going to be put into assignments, environments, contexts, where you don't have all the background knowledge and you don't have all the answers right away. And success is really defined by how close and quickly you can adapt to your atmosphere and get caught up and brought up to speed and bring value. And then finally, I would say, really look at my extracurricular activities in a very strategic way. I think companies of today and are looking for employees of tomorrow that can really be dropped into any situation or any environment with different stakeholders, different objectives, different personalities, different skills mix, and work together towards a common goal, build consensus, and really work together for a tangible reason. And so those are skills that you don't really acquire inside the classroom. Those EQ type of skills are really what you acquire outside of the classroom. So I would be very vigilant in how I would go after my extracurricular activities, whether it's running for the school paper, running for student council president, president of my fraternity. I would really look at those extracurricular activities and not something to just check the box, but really that has real meaning as part of my overall educational experience. I really looked for an opportunity where I could balance my technical skills with the opportunity to cultivate leadership. And I was really looking and very careful in wanting a role that really balanced those two priorities. And when I graduated from graduate school, I actually spent my first year as a professor of engineering at Long Beach State University as I was looking at different opportunities. And I remember my parents getting a little bit antsy and saying, Teaching is a great profession, very noble profession, but if you want to get into industry, we got to start getting moving over here. And I was really looking at a bunch of different opportunities and lo and behold, this opportunity comes along through the Career Center for a Boeing Systems Engineering Rotation Program. And it was an opportunity where you could have different technical rotations over a three-year period, but there was also this significant leadership component to that. And I remember thinking, gosh, this is really the perfect job for me. And I was so nervous going through the application process, going through the interview process, 
and so excited when, you know, by my phone, seemingly every second of the day for a three day period, just waiting for it to ring and my heart dropping every time it did ring. And when I finally got that call and said I got that offer, I was just over, over the moon and overjoyed with it. And I remember my first day really going through the motions of new hire orientation and really drinking from the fire hose because it was so many different processes and procedures and the way we do business. But two things really struck out. And the first was, even though Boeing was such a large company, 160,000 employees, 80 plus different countries, it felt like it had the intimacy of a small Midwestern town. And secondly, I was struck by how people not only cared about what you could do, but who you were as an individual. And those two things really resonated with me. And right then and there, I knew I made the right choice. You know, three things come to mind. And I remember being in one of my mentor's office over the course of a mentoring session. And something he said really struck a nerve with me. And he said, I'm always puzzled by how people come to my office and say, I want to be person X or I want to have the role of person Y. And the reality of the matter is that 15, 20 years from now, the job you're going to have doesn't even exist yet. So the best thing you can do for your career is do your current job better than anyone else has ever done. And that really resonated with me and something I really took to heart. The second thing that I've always tried to do is really stretch myself and volunteer for additional tasks, additional opportunities really looking for those stretch assignments, those assignments that are difficult, those assignments that truthfully nobody ever wants. Because that shows two things. One is it, it's helped me round out my professional portfolio. But second, it's really shown leadership how much I'm committed and how much I care about our vision, our products, what we do and who we are. And then you kind of automatically become the go-to person for new and exciting projects and impromptu type of things. And then finally, I would probably say third, the, the most important thing out of that piece is really being empowered to create your own opportunities. I'm very proud of the fact that I've created about a handful of employee engagement and culture initiatives within our organization that have had a really meaningful impact with our employees. And as another example, I remember being capture lead of one of our significant NASA programs and I thought, how cool would it be if I actually got the opportunity to program manage the very initiative that I helped capture. At the time, program management and business development were two different functions. And so I worked up the organization to find a manager and a management chain that would allow me to do both program management and business development. So not being afraid to empower yourself and empower your own career would also be something I'd highly recommend. Mentoring is really one of my passions. Uh, one of the quotes that really resonates with me is, I've heard a number of successful people say when you reach the top that it's very important from a duty and obligation standpoint to bring the elevator back down. And I think mentoring is absolutely vital for all successful organizations from a knowledge capture perspective, a succession planning perspective, and overall engagement and culture. What I've done is, I'm very proud to say that I've started a mentoring program at Boeing called Mentoring on Rotation Experience. And the whole program is designed to pair mentors and protégés over six month rotations based on the things that they're looking for. Whether that's technical skills, leadership acumen, work-life balance, educational opportunities. We've built a program over six months where it's designed for mentors and protégés to have consistent sessions, program activities and events supplement that and each participant gets points for every session they attend or every activity that they're part of. And at the end of the six months, folks graduate from the program with distinction or with honors and the Boeing executive sponsors are there to be part of the graduation ceremony and recognize these individuals. And this is a program that started in El Segundo, California. It's now going to multiple Boeing sites. And I'm very proud of the fact that we were also published in the International Mentoring Association Connect magazine and I had the opportunity to present our findings at the International Mentoring Association Conference. So that's been a significant career highlight for me and something I'm very proud of and something that means a great deal to me. Follow the trail of your passions. Don't follow the trail of your promotions.
And I remember earlier in my career, I was placed with two opportunities. And one of those opportunities was one I was really passionate about, but it was something that was a little bit more hazy from a funding standpoint and a roadmap standpoint because it was so risky. There was another opportunity in front of me that was very clear from a roadmap perspective, the funding was in line, and there was a promise of a promotion and a pay increase. And I really thought about what it is that I wanted to do, and I ended up taking the latter. And when I started in that role right away, that first day, I knew in my gut and in my intuition, I made the wrong decision. But I still gave my best self to that role, and ironically enough, a few months later, there was sort of a reprioritization of resources and the funding from the second role went to the first role and the funding from the first role was removed from the second role. And so it all ended up working out in the end and there was a happy ending. But I remember recalling I never wanted to make that mistake again because oftentimes we forget that your career is an interval of time, it's not just a point in time. And it's important to understand that area under the curve of acquiring the skills, the accomplishments, the perspectives, and the promotions and the titles over time to really make a successful career. And I've really adopted to that mindset and really understanding that what you're passionate about, what you're good at, and what the company needs, if you can answer that question at that intersecting point, you can never go wrong in your career. There's so many incredible technical findings and technologies evolving. We're talking about digital payloads, we're talking about miniaturization, reconfigurability. There's so many exciting things from a technical perspective, but I think the most exciting part about the industry is the overall visibility itself. We're having a great deal of innovators, visionaries, billionaires putting their own skin in the game in the industry. The Elon Musks, the Jeff Bezos, the Richard Bransons, the Paul Allens. The industry is having more notoriety and more publicity than it's ever had before. And it's made for a really brilliant time to be in the satellite industry right now. Satellites were always cool, but now it seems like they're chic. And so moving forward, I think the satellite industry is going to be on the cusp of a revolution in much the same way the computing industry was at a revolution in the late 80s and early 90s, where we're gonna look 30, 40 years from now and say, our life has significantly altered due to the actions and activities of today's satellite industry. And I think that's really cool.